What's going on guys? It's your boy, Fedora Fox Live. Uh, today, got another vlog for you guys. Um, and this vlog, you know, contains some elements of travel and obviously language learning because your boy be about that Spanish, that Espanol. Um, you know, I've been studying it for a few years, but uh, I keep dropping off it. Um, for various reasons uh, but we won't get into that, those reasons um, so yeah I pretty much just want to let you guys know that uh, I'm publicly going live with some news and um, this news might be a shock to some but not a shock to others and yeah I thought I would um, conquer my fears and pretty much go live and public with something that I've kept to myself for most of my life um, but over the last three years here and there you know I've become more and more comfortable with letting the cat out of the bag and um, yeah I just wanted to announce to you guys first of all before I move on your boy is coming out I'm 100% home grown in the UK I bet you thought I was going to say something else anyway so your boy be coming out the closet if you want to say that about his struggles with dyslexia uh, it's something that's plagued me for most of my life and um, it's really been tough uh, to say the least um, I talked to a few people and half of, the, half of the time they don't even know that I'm dyslexic um, and it's probably probably because I mask it so well or I've become really hyper uh, vigilant or hyper protective of myself so that I'm never exposed in a situation where I would be likely to have to read out loud or anything like that so um, your boy is here to share I've got some music playing in the background so um, I don't want YouTube to to pull this video down so just give me a second and I'll be back so guys I'm back again uh, I passed the, that car pumping out the music and um, yeah so let me continue if I can remember where I left off so uh, yeah I just wanted to go public with my struggles with dyslexia um, you know, I've got a bit of motivation from watching other YouTubers who, uh, you know, they've really come to grips with their, I don't know, experiences or their disadvantages of dyslexia. But the truth is, you know, dyslexia does have a lot of pros and cons. Um, you know, it is looked upon as a disability of some sort. But personally, I just can't see the connection between dyslexia and disability. Um, are there challenges? Yes. But uh, disability, hmm, no. But what I will say though is, it's hard work coping with dyslexia. You spend so much energy, so much energy like you wouldn't believe it's like having paranoia all the time um, and you're constantly looking over your shoulder to to see if anybody's uh, chasing you or something like that I know it sounds very very biz bizarre and it sounds very strange but it, it's kind of like that in a way it's not like that all the time but in a, when there's situations where I'm likely to have to read something um, in front of a crowd. Uh, 
I don't know, man. It's, it's something weird happens. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to uh, give you some examples of where the struggle with dyslexia has taken me and uh, uh, some of the crazy scenarios that I can laugh about now, but at the time it was very distressing. Um, those that have dyslexia will know what I'm talking about. Um, those that don't have dyslexia, um, they may have good comprehension of you know, how people may struggle with things, but you know, you do get quite a few ignorant people that try and throw the uh, positive or negativity card at you. Oh, you're just being negative. You can do it if you want. It's not a problem. Oh, stop calling it dyslexia because then you're creating the problem. You're speaking life or death into your own life. When really that's kind of stupid. That's like saying, you know, you go to the doctor and say, doctor, I've got tonsillitis. And the doctor turns around and says, no, you don't. You're just telling yourself, you're just telling yourself that you have tonsillitis. You don't have tonsillitis. You're just being negative. Okay. Believe it or not, those that have dyslexia may have gone through some experiences like this with multiple people, whether it's friends, family, close friends or close family, strangers, or I should say colleagues, managers, all sorts. You'd be surprised. <laughs> There's a lot of managers that are not too knowledgeable about dyslexia. In fact, <laughs> there's quite a few managers that are not even knowledgeable about their own team. So to expect them to be knowledgeable about dyslexia is a big ask, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so pretty much what I wanted to to explain is that you know, I'm coming out and sharing, sharing this story as a mechanism to break some boundaries within my own self. Um, seeing that loads of people may see, may see this video. Then again, loads of people may not. But regardless, um, it's something that I'm going to share for my own benefit. Uh, there's going to be lots of people that might say oh you didn't need to do this you're just doing it for the views uh, I don't know about doing it for the views I don't know how many of you guys go onto Google or YouTube and start searching for dyslexia topics uh, not many but anyway um, yeah so how does dyslexia how does dyslexia relate to one of my passions, which is traveling. And the other passion is learning languages. Although I've kind of just got stuck on the Spanish. I did learn Portuguese from Brazil. Um, but then when I would forget Portuguese phrases and words, I would f switch it and use some Spanish words. And even though I'm, I was understood, I wasn't actually learning. So I kind of I cut the Portuguese and just stayed with Espanol and I'm, I'm happy for, I'm happy that I made that choice uh, because I kind of wanted to kill two birds with one stone or three birds with one stone but anyway so um, how does dyslexia and traveling um, coincide uh, in many ways to be honest let me just give you a small example of what it's like just even just public transport I know this sounds crazy but these are the things that have happened to me many times and <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing sometimes but you just get on with it I'll give an example so um let's say I'm going to work or I was going to college or whatever it was I would uh, sometimes be running a bit late or maybe on time and the bus happens to seem like it's leaving early. So I would run for the bus, try and get that bus, run hard. I'm looking at the number. Let's say it's uh, the number 79. I'm running for the bus. I get right to the bus. The bus driver opens the door. Then I look at the side and I see that it says the number 16. And then you're kind of stuck between pride and confusion <laughs> because on the one hand 
you don't want it you don't want to look like you've just ran hard for a bus and you and it's the wrong bus on the other hand you don't want to stay on the bus because you know that this bus is going to take you where you don't want to go sorry the sun is just blinding me wow i'm sorry if i look a bit bleached out i'll soon get to my natural complexion soon and anyway there's a lot of noise here anyway uh, these guys their quad bikes so yeah as I was saying um, so yeah you caught well I was caught within I don't know a stage of it, I don't know it's a weird sensation it's like it's half pride and half embarrassment and and just something else and, and a little bit of confusion as well so you end up well me I ended up staying on the bus for one stop and then kind of muttering or mumbling out my mouth oh um, oh I need to go to the cash point uh, before I leave town hoping that I've said it loud enough so other people have heard me say it so I can justify why I've had to jump off the bus <laughs> one stop from where I just sprinted you know to get on the bus uh, believe it or not that's happened quite a few times um, and man it's confusing it's confusing to find yourself believing you've seen, you've seen numbers such as seven and nine and then get to the bus, the actual bus, stand right next to it and then see one and six. That's crazy, you would think, that's crazy. But it's a common thing with dyslexia. Um, and... Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, explaining this to people can be a bit of a waste of time because no, nobody really cares <laughs> when people are not going through their own struggle. When they're not going through the same struggles, struggles as you, they're not really that bothered, really. Uh, that's how the world is, you know what I mean? You can't always expect everyone to feel what you feel. That's, that's not really going to happen, you know? You know, empaths do that, yeah. You know, they, they're able to emotionally, emotionally feel what other people feel, but obviously not all of us are, are wired that way. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's how this dyslexia um, correlates with traveling. It's, it's hard work. <laughs> it's hard work for me looking at maps. Oh my gosh, looking at a map is crazy google maps okay i can handle that that's it's it's cool i mean my dyslexia isn't so terrible but it has its moments where i don't know it's crazy it, it's very crazy um i'm good with my left and my right i'm good with colors i'm good with stuff that's creative um, i'm good at writing i might miss out a few letters <laughs> or possibly words but the majority of the time, my creative writing is on point. That's one of my, my strongest my strongest assets um, in terms of having dyslexia is my ability to write. Um, but on the other hand, on the other hand, when it comes to reading, when it comes to reading, oh man, it is... Have you ever had... I don't know, a, a personal issue or a problem or something that you wish that you could trade with somebody else. You know, let's say someone else had sweaty feet and you know, you didn't like that you had big eyes. Hint. Um, yeah, like, and you wanted to pretty much just swap for the day or swap for life. It's, you get into that situation with uh, dyslexia. Well, for me anyway. There's been times I've been like, God, why, why? Like, the worst two combinations in the world is dyslexia and being short-sighted because you don't know if half of the time you're just not seeing it or the dyslexia is kicking in, kicking in and into turbo mode. But uh, yeah, man, uh, it's, 
it's crazy because now I can talk about it a lot more but I've had to go through things certain things in life in order to evaluate you know my strengths and who I am and what I'm about what I can do what I can't do um, you know a lot has taught me how to call a spade a spade you know if there's an issue there is an issue if I have a problem I have a problem if my finger is hurting my fingers hurting and um, that's the rule that I that that I go by now um, it's just complete honesty with self when you're <coughs> sorry guys it's not corona <coughs> I don't know what happened there it's not corona don't worry I'm not sure if I'm even allowed to say corona and I've just said it again uh, situation 19 situation 19 it's not situation 19 okay it's not situation 19 <coughs> Seriously, I'm not making a joke of it. <coughs> I don't know what just happened. I think I swallowed my own saliva and it's it's drowning me. Anyway, um, so yeah, as, as I was saying with the reading, uh, man, it's hard enough being short-sighted, but to have dyslexia as well, it's like, please, why, why? But um, man, on the other side, on the other side of dyslexia, from my personal experience, I've just got just natural abilities and natural hunger for for anything creative and and social. Although sometimes I might not be very social myself, like always around crowds, but. I love crowds at the same time, so it's a it's a it's a weird one. Um, as for me, you know, I love seeing dance, or I should say, dance, because we're in Birmingham. But yeah, I'm from London originally, so there's some words that I still say that are that, that are a bit Cockney. I'm back, guys. <clears throat> I've changed the card over, and I'm here again to go. Okay, so the hard part is <clears throat> trying to remember the last thing I was saying. Uh, trying to remember that. Um, it's not to say my memory is not good, but sometimes multitasking with recording, walking, breathing, being a man, you know, all of that stuff. You know, you kind of lose thought. Okay, I'm gassing a little bit. Um, my memory is actually quite good, to be fair. Um, and maybe that's part of the key to to me enjoying Spanish um, yeah because I feel like before I even took my first my first lessons uh, in in college or language school I um, I pretty much taught myself almost most of the basics in Spanish um, because I was adamant that one day I was going to live in España in Spain one day I was going to live in Spain and where did that stem from? it's funny because when I was in school um, in high school or secondary school as we say in the UK um, I the light's too much down there let's walk this way No, let's walk this way. Sorry guys. It's like golden hour right now. And uh, the sun is killing it. You know what? It does good for my complexion. Your boy looks a bit negrito. Mmm. Chocolate. Bueno. So, uh, when I was in school, I, <laughs> it's funny. My Spanish lesson was like, it was de designated the mess about lesson. Everybody messed about in that lesson. Even if you didn't want to, even the good kids would mess about in that lesson. And uh, it was crazy. Even though in the back of my mind, there was some interest, the interest didn't matter because uh, I was struggling in, in school anyway with, uh, with this dyslexia situation 
and I genuinely didn't even know of dyslexia at that time. I just thought, you know, I must be stupid because everybody else is not struggling with reading and stuff. Um, even though I, I actually enjoy information, I love information, I love reading, but the frustration of reading requires, I don't know, it's because it, I require so much energy to be put into reading. It just puts me off. It's like an instant battle, man. It's, it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, so in this Spanish class, like, um, although I didn't do any Spanish, and the only thing I learned, <laughs> which was just one phrase, and that one phrase was vital to my life. Uh, and it was uh, video juegas, video juegas, which was um, video games. Because that's all I did. I was like the video games man, the video games done, the video game master. Man, that's all I ever talked about was video games and, and storylines. Man, I was big for storylines. Um, so yeah, that's what, that's what kind of, maybe that was probably a seed planted. Um, is that I just, I learned a word, a, a phrase in another language for the first time. Apart from the usual, maybe cuss words in um, in Urdu. <laughs> so uh, yeah, man. I remember one time. I think I was in year nine. I don't know. I, I, I can't remember, but it was my early days in in high school. I remember one day I randomly said, and I don't know who I was talking to. I don't know if I was talking to someone next to me or talking to myself. But out of my own mouth, I said, and I don't know why I said this. I said, one day I'm going to live in Spain. I did not know anything about Spain at all. It never came into my mind. The only thing I knew about Spain was a little bit of Spanish football. La Liga. Um, Barcelona. Madrid. And the only reason why I knew about Barcelona. And the only reason why I knew about Madrid is because of the real Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo. You know, the real Ronaldo. Some people call him the fat Ronaldo, but I would have him on my team even if he was rolling around, just to be there, man. I was a proper fan, I loved Ronaldo. Um, not to say that Cristiano isn't an amazing footballer, but I don't know, there's just something about the real Ronaldo. Anyway, so um, yeah, so I, I randomly just said out of my mouth, and I, I remember it, but I just can't re remember what was going around me, going on around me. And I just randomly said, one day I'm gonna live in Spain. And I never thought anything of it for years until I started learning Spanish. And then it came back to me that I said those words a long time ago. I don't know why I said it, but I said it. Anyway, I'm um, not sure how to connect all of that together, but I just find it amazing that I'm now very passionate about learning Spanish. And um, yeah, so uh, where do I want to go with this story right now? Where do I want to go? Yeah, I want to link my Spanish with traveling, with my passion for traveling. Um, and uh, pretty much as you could guess as you're gonna guess my first destination was Spain <laughs> and I pretty much mentioned that before in other vlogs uh, although those vlogs were probably in Spanish so you might not understand any of that depending on your ability or knowledge on the Spanish language so yeah anyway so my first holiday was spain um my second holiday was spain my third holiday was spain my fourth holiday was spain and i realized i don't want to live in spain at the time no i don't want to live in spain not really i wanted to because of having experiences with other people 
from other countries, other Spanish-speaking countries, like uh, Venezuela. And that was actually one of my first encounters with the Latin world. Actually, no. I used to speak to a guy on Skype from a language exchange website. Uh, he was from Mexico. Um, can you guess what his name was? Jorge. <laughs> his name was George, man. Um, anyway, less of the stereotypes. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. That's just uh, that's just my character, man. I'm a bit silly like that. A, li a little bit too much banter sometimes. But uh, yeah, so when I was introduced to the Latin world outside of Europe, I don't know, something, something switched in me. And I found myself not wanting to learn Castellano, which is Spanish from Spain. And I would veer over to Latin American Spanish. Um, it's not to say I wouldn't listen to any Spanish from Spain, Castellano, but I don't know, there was just more about me that wanted to learn about Latin American culture. And um, funny thing was, is that I spent most of my time still listening to Spanish from Spain. And, um, you know, they speak a lot different. Uh, for example, in Spain, if they wanted to say, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? They would say, oye, que hace? Que hace? So the C, oh, let me spell the word. Uh, H-A-C-E, that would spell hace. So the T-H, when there's an E after the C, or an I after the C, it's pronounced like the English T-H. Um, but in the rest of the world, it would be hace. Oye, que hace? Que hace, hombre? And so that pretty much um, was still going on. I was still learn uh, Castellano, the Spanish from from Spain. And uh, yeah, it took me a while to, to switch over because I found it difficult to understand how quick the Latin Americans speak. And I used to think that the Spanish spoke quite fast and they do speak fast, but to me, not as fast as other parts of Latin America. So, um, uh, where am I going with this? <laughs> so anyway, so um, I went on that journey, started to learn more different variations of the Spanish language, which then led me to mingling with Latin Americans in my city and Birmingham. And I pretty much ended up with a cool, a cool Brazilian girl. She was cool, man. Bit crazy, bit loca, but very funny. Um, and she was married to, to a British guy. Um, man, they're good people. Although, I don't know, because of personal reasons, I've kind of gone missing from a lot of people uh, on that side of the world, on that side of life. Um, no fault of this, it's just my own life, um, situations, uh, and whatever. But, um, yeah, no love lost. Um, so anyway, you know, I started mingling with more Portuguese speaking people. And um, man, that sparked something because the connection with being around, being around Brazilians and, and learning some Portuguese and being a fan of Ronaldo, the real Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo. Man, it was like, oh, this is so amazing. But I just couldn't keep it up. But years later, I found that since I've been learning Spanish, for some reason, I can still, when someone's talking to me in Portuguese, I can 
I don't know I can get the context of a lot of what they're saying but depends on what it is I would pretty much say in a basic conversation if they were talking about politics or I don't know the economy or something like that maybe I would struggle but I could still kind of get around what's being said if I'm reading it funny enough I can understand so anyway um, guys this video is pretty long to be honest and um, I might have to do a part two to this uh, and we'll just take this as a long introduction to me coming out the closet the closet of being I don't know enclosed and bound by the perception of other people's perception or I don't know the assumption that that people are always judging and assessing me in situations where it comes down to me having to read having to write read out loud that is or how long it takes me to read something um, and the funny thing is people do judge so it's a fact they actually do it's not all just my own assumption it's not all just my own perception people do notice but they just say things like oh you're just a slow reader or oh yeah you're short sighted man I've even got the dyslexic glasses like and people still don't know so you know maybe people should do more videos like this and um, not make a big deal out of it but you know help other people to break that spirit of fear that's on their life because it eats away at your energy it eats away at your focus it eats away at your passions it eats away at some of your goals and dreams um, and yeah in the next video I'll get into how it affects some of my own dreams or my own passions and stuff like that um, yeah and now that we're in this situation 19 um, you know I don't want to say the other word um, it's almost looking very bleak that I'm gonna be traveling <laughs> but God willing because your boy always has to say God willing because nothing can be done unless God allows and so I'll get back to you on the second video guys thanks for watching if you like this video click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel support me guys and when I upload a new video or when I go live you'll get notification notifications if you click on that little bell icon there this is your boy the fedora fox live catch you next time